Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're looking at another dead blog for update Express Strike, and this is for the Mars 15. This is going to be a new light vehicle which is coming to the French tech tree, and it's going to be rank 6. At least right now, it was also after the AMX 13 hot in the tech tree, and uh, has some interesting qualities to it. Uh, it's definitely one that I'm personally looking forward to as somebody who is a fan of the French light vehicles. It's always nice to have another one, and also will make spading the AMX 13. 13 hearts, an easier thing to do, even though that thing is absolutely terrible at its PR and has been for a very long time. Anyway, let's get into the history of this vehicle. The story starts in the early 1980s, where the French Crusoe Loire industry company began work on developing a new family of tracked combat vehicles, which would share a common chassis, therefore making production a lot easier. Initiating work under a private venture, Crusoe Loire industry aimed to produce vehicles for customers on the export market who already used the widely used AMX-13 light tank, so basically an upgrade over the AMX-13. Full-scale development of the ideas only began in 1988, and several variants of vehicles were developed, ranging from light tank modifications, also APCs, IFVs, even SBAAs and SBHs, as well as a number of other variants on top of that. But many of these planned variants never actually passed uh, the drawing board stage, so they basically ju just got stuck in pencil and paper. And of the few that actually did, the light tank modification stood out as it aimed to build upon the popular characteristics of the AMX-13 and expand upon them by incorporating modern technology. So that was the one that really went forward. The light tank modification featured a small and also a nimble chassis while being armed with a 90mm cannon and also promising low maintenance efforts, which is obviously very important. The first and only prototype of this variant was shown off in 1990, along with the IFV modification, and after its reveal, the vehicle received the designation Mars 15, or M-A-R-S 15. And in 1991, another prototype was built, and this was armed with a 105mm cannon. This was also shown off and became last of the series of light vehicles. And in fact, the expected response from potential foreign customers never actually materialized, mainly because it was the end of the Cold War, in the early 1990s, and also a lot of countries with their surplus of MBTs were taken out of storage and sold to other countries. And as a result of this, the MARS vehicles never left the prototype stage and were eventually abandoned. So the Mars 15 has come into the game as a rank 6 uh, French vehicle. And something to mention about it on the dev server is it was also around the BR of 8.3. So the fact that this thing, you know, has uh, some interesting characteristics to it and also is at a lower BR than a lot of other rank sixes, this is actually pretty cool. You know, it's uh, something to definitely look forward to. One of the problems that it's going to have is the same issue that stuff like the Crusader is going to have, where because it's an end of the line vehicle, it's going to have ridiculously high modification costs which obviously means that it's going to put off people using this thing. But at the same time, since this thing is a light tank, and since it is a scout, and since it has a 90mm with probably stock heat FS, uh, then it should be completely fine at the BR of 8.3, uh, as long as it doesn't face too many T55 AMs, uh, which will be able to deal with its um, heat FS with their actual armor. But the key thing that scouts have is they have separate playstyles uh, from, you know, mediums and from heavies. Mediums and heavies are pretty reliant in being able to annihilate the enemy, you know, through destruction, having to kill them or having to, you know, play aggressively or play defensively, depending on how the map is set up. When it comes to scouts, scouts can play a much more passive role on the battlefield, stay alive, make sure to let the uh, your allied team know where the enemy team are, and then hopefully they can capture 
capitalize on it. It does mean that you get into situations where you can do everything 100% correct and you can still lose, but it also means that you have a little bit more of a string to your bow, so therefore you are not as reliant at just facing tanks, you know, f um, straight up, which is uh, one of the issues you can have as an MBT or a medium tank or a heavy tank if you aren't spaded and they are. Sometimes you are just outdone by the fact that you don't have certain modifications and they do. At least with the Mars 15 and all of the other light tanks, you can play slightly differently and uh, be able to, you know, run around a little bit more. This vehicle also weighs 16 tons and is powered by a 420 horsepower diesel engine. This gives it a 26.25 horsepower per ton ratio, which ain't too bad for the power to the weight, you know, it's pretty good. And one thing to also mention is this thing is absolutely tiny. On the dev server, this thing was really small, and I still can't work out whether it's from the camera position of it, or whether it's from just um, the, uh, whether it's just from the vehicle itself. And I do think this thing is has a very low silhouette uh, compared to a lot of other vehicles at the BR, especially stuff like mediums. This thing also has a top speed of 75 kilometers an hour. You won't get to that unless you chuck it off a cliff, and generally it's low uh, end acceleration is okay. It's nothing to really write home about, but it's good enough uh, to be able to, you know, uh, survive, or it's it's good enough to be able to reposition. This thing also has four smoke grenades on it, uh, which isn't a great amount. Normally you would want two sets of smokes, so normally eight, with only one set of four smokes. What that generally means is you can only reposition once after being shot or after trying to get to a separate area. The armor itself is is non-existent, but there is one key factor for this machine. Something that cannot be understated is the ability for these weird extreme angles to be able to bounce around. So one thing you will find around the BR of the Mars 15 is a lot of people starting to use stuff like APFSDS. APFSDS has a uh, propensity to bounce off extreme angles of vehicles, and if you have a look at the upper plate or the upper glacis of the Mars 15, you're going to end up with a lot of ricochets because of the angle of that. I remember back in the day when the Leopard 2K was added to the game and what ended up happening, especially on its upper glacis, is you would shoot it and the round would ping off somewhere because of the extreme angle of it. The Mars, I believe, will be the same uh, with its extreme angles. That doesn't mean its survivability is very high though. Generally, this vehicle will get penned, it will get destroyed, it will get annihilated and it won't have a great time if it's actually being shot. The key to playing a vehicle like the Mars 15 is not being shot. And I know that sounds really stupid because, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a simple verbiage, right? Hey, well, you know how you play this? Yeah, don't die. You know, <laughs> but the, the what I mean by it is this vehicle is completely set up to be an aggressive scout. So you get close to the enemy in an area where you are not showing and then you use your binoculars to be able to scout everything that is near you and then anybody who pushes past you gets the donk of the 90mm. That's pretty much how I would play this thing and it's how I'm going to play it. You know, it, it should have a little bit more power than the AMX-13, should be able to move around a little bit more, which will be nice for it. Now the 90mm that it has, the CN90F4, this thing, as we talked about, has access to heat FS, and uh, at least on the dev server, it had stock HE. I'm sure it won't have stock HE when it comes to the uh, overall game. Uh, another thing to mention about it as well is um, it did have a really nice APFS DS shell. And APFSDS is obviously the meta round, if you want to see it as that, around the BR, that you will find it. And it will be good at being able to penetrate pretty much anything that it finds. But one thing to mention about um, the gun is, at least on the dev server, it wasn't stabilized. So it still has the same issue as all of the other French vehicles, where stabilization doesn't occur. So that means that with these guns, and with the way that they work, you won't be able to 
you won't be able to stabilize um, onto a target. So it'll be very hard to hit the first shot um, when it comes to this thing on targets which are moving around. Instead, you're going to have to wait patiently in those aggressive positions, wait for people to push, and then bang them in the side, uh, which will obviously help. As a fan of many French light tanks, you know, the whole tech tree is littered with them and they're all incredibly fun to play. I'm very happy to see another one be added to the game. And also, with the fact that they've talked about a 105mm version, that would be a really interesting event vehicle, or it would also be a really interesting premium, or even just another one in the tech tree to be able to add. And with the French also getting the SK-105 alongside this thing, that just means that more light tanks you know better i'm just very happy for france they have a really fun ground tech tree overall and now they're getting two more fun vehicles i'm just a little bit sad about the modification costs because it's going to be an end of the line vehicle so yeah it's going to be a little bit harder to research and also spade for individuals i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time i'd just like to thank teddy john ryman universe a Conte Baraka, Trigger Hippie, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez B. Young, Hosest Cachot, Hans, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.